episode eight of Potato Revolution. Season two. I was born on the eighth. You were born on the eighth. Mm. Of... And you appeared on the eighth episode. The eighth yeah. of what month? December, which is the twelfth. That's the twelfth. Yeah. What... I share my birthday with Jim Morrison. Yeah. And uh, Salma Hal- Halmik. Salma. Oh, the... Um... The really hot Eurasian Mexican... chick. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, she mixed Selma Hayek. Yeah, yeah, Selma Hayek. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was also the day they shot John Lennon and Dimebag Daryl. And it Whoa. was also the same day that the Queen Street Massacre happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of, a lot of a gun lot of violence. Shit. <laughs> a lot of shit happens on my birthday, yeah. Shit, man. Wow. Jesus. It's a good intro. Yeah. So we should probably... So, welcome to episode eight right, of Petter Revolution. All right, come All right. on. And make I, it, make it I also won on the eight on... Uh, What's that game where the <laughs> thing where the ball spins around? Roulette. Roulette. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, the one where you go to the poker machines. Not the poker machines. Like you go to, go to I've the only casino. bet on roulette twice at the casino, and both times I cleaned up on the 8 and the 12. And both times was on Christmas Day. How much does uh, God want me to be a Christian? That's, that's They've amazing. just gone, hey. I reckon it's, it's Satan. Jesus. <laughs> it's Satan rolling the dice. It's Jesus' birthday. There you go. Have a whole heap of money. <laughs> money. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of uh, just, like, just just before right. we get in, we should pro- actually what? probably, we, we probably big... ladies and gentlemen, what? welcome to episode eight of Potato Revolution <laughs> season two. Um, we're going to start this now. So we've with already me... started. Yeah, we started yeah, yeah, this ages yeah, I ago. I know, but we need we should do the formal introduction, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So right. we're here. Tell yeah. We got Morgan. Yeah. All right. He's here. I'm here. Andy and our guest Kirk McKenzie. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to be here. Oh, good, because it is good to be here. Well, well look, now, <laughs> now I've, you've done that, I've yeah. lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was going to talk about. No. What's your train of thought? Uh, oh, I that's th- right. We were, you I were... thought I was going to talk about shit. You guys were just going to ask me questions. We, we, we will ask I was questions. going to do backflips in the background. Yeah. But, um... Cool. But um, you just reminded me, because you mentioned the Christian thing. I got this uh, letter in the mail uh, about two days ago. It's a birthday card. My birthday was like two months ago. It's finally got here. It's been like, you know, sent and re-sent. It's... Like and return to San. Where did they s- did they send that to China or uh, something? Sent, yeah, pretty much. No, they sent it to the old address. Oh right. Yeah, and I opened it up and I'm like, oh cool, it's a it's a birthday card. It's got this picture on it, and uh, tell me what you guys think of this. So for the listeners at home, basically there's a uh, picture of uh, it's very 1950s. A guy in a, a polo shirt Irish. tucked into his slacks. Fifties man's man, yeah, with his yeah his shirt tucked in, and he's got uh, one hand wrapped around a beer. And I love hand... how he's wearing a welder's glove to, while he's trying to turn the meat over on the barbecue. But well, anyway. that's you know that's what they did back You'll, in the yeah, you, you should actually scan that and put it up so people know. So people can actually look what at this it. horrendous. Object All right, and he's got a little thought bubble coming out. He's going, if only I had a third hand to scratch myself with, life would be complete. Well, if you didn't wear your pants like that, you wouldn't need to. <laughs> you could just, like, rub yourself up and down on the on the grill. I wouldn't do that. I don't do that, people at home. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I got this uh, card from my uh, Christian aunt and uncle. Mm. Um I don't. I don't know. Is this is this how they like they? I don't talk to them very much. They must view you as a drunken, a drunken, a drunken fifties wear... guy. Yeah, wearing yeah. a welder's glove. Okay, we're right. But it's also got this little thing in here. It's got a little riddle. I'm going to read it to you guys now. Cool. All right. Um, take care how you listen, for whoever has more will be given to him, and whoever does not have even what he thinks he has will be taken away. Can you give this to me? Can I just have a look? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Take care how you listen, Morgan. Yeah, I just read it. Whoever has more will be given to him. But whoever does not have, even what he thinks will have... What, you, you, when you read it right, it makes will sense. Has, will, <laughs> look at this shit. <laughs> he has will be taken away. Even what he thinks he has will be taken away. Yeah, so it's a threat. It's yeah, it's a threat. It's a threat. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm I'm glad that um, you know my aunt and uncle love me that much that they're just like, oh, uh, the Bible's full of threats. Happy birthday, mm. but mm. fuck you, you're gonna die in hell. Thanks. God giveth Thanks, life, God. he taketh away. Yeah. Stop wearing welders' gloves. Andy's really sexy Asian girlfriend just turned up. Uh, I should probably open a door for her. Oh, really? Where? No, someone let her in. It's right. oh, okay, cool. Oh, she's in. Oh, All right, okay, she'll come in. All right. Um, you had some things that you wanted to talk about. Yes, I did. Um, oh, we'll get to that soon. Um, okay, so Morgan's just left. 
the room. He's letting my girlfriend in at the moment. So I'm going to start ragging on Morgan while he's not here. He's a fucking pedophile, to be honest. Really? No, he's not. Oh, he's back. What have you done? <laughs> he accused you of being a pedophile. Uh, that old chestnut. Uh, um, yeah, what are we going to well, You do have a white van yeah. with no windows. Come in. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's Sandy's girlfriend has just turned up. Yep. She's drinking beer. I wish I had an Asian girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she has friends. Really? I got... <laughs> Andy said you're a loner. No, he means you're online from somewhere. <laughs> I said online. L- oh, online. online. All right, sorry. Okay. Uh, go on. What are you going right. to say? What do you got? What do you got? Um, so a bunch of shit's been happening recently, but um, fuck it. We'll get into that later. We've got Kirk here. All right. Um, what's been happening with you lately? I'm on antidepressants. And, uh, How's it working out? Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on day eight, and I feel fantastic. Never felt better. Um, Did you ever have like a, a run of like shitty antidepressants that made you just hate everything? No, like, did you, never done really? that. So you just had like the doctor went have this and everything was cool. Well, this is my first day of cool, and uh, I'm I'm digging it. Yeah. Wow, it's good. And uh, the funny thing is, I always said every, people always said to me, uh, drugs aren't the answer. Turns out drugs are the answer. <laughs> Turns out it's working out. It's, I was right. They were wrong. I've been uh, told I should be on antidepressants for the rest of my life, which is, Kirk, you should take drugs yeah. every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's, That's so what I was always telling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's fantastic. And the best thing about it is they told me that uh, I shouldn't drink with them because they wouldn't work. Drinking's even better. <laughs> And last time I took them, I stopped after eight days because I ran out and I couldn't find a pharmacy that stocked my particular brand of antidepressants. Yeah. Uh, I felt fantastic as well. And I smoked some cones on day eight, and they were great. They were the best cones I've ever had. So um, I've got all these drugs that I'm going to go and see, check out. And find <laughs> out while on antidepressants. What's it like doing coke on antidepressants? <laughs> I don't know yet, but fuck, I want to find out because fucking just getting pissed is great. <laughs> Yeah, just stay away from that uh, that crocodile shit. That uh, I don't know if you heard the Russian crocodile or crocodile they call it, dude. It's that's not a crocodile. What? Right, Is it a so crocodile? It's, it's it's heroin that's been injected with into a crocodile, and it, then they cut up the crocodile. And then no, it, it's crocodile. it's heroin that's been made with a flesh eating bacteria, and it was a it, it was designed <laughs> to stop the heroin problem in Russia. Oh. So what happens is you get a dealer. Do you want heroin? Yeah, there's a new type. It's called Crocodile, really? Give me that shit. Within six months, you whatever part of your body you've injected mm. dies. It's a flesh-eating virus. Right. So, like, go on YouTube and type in crocodile. So, if you're booting it up into your eyeball, you, yeah, your, your face will fucking decay, basically. So, the, is... the life expectancy is about nine months from initially taking it. Oh, this is Resident Evil shit. That's what this is. Well, kind of, but I guess the government's gone. Can you smoke it, or is it just an injectable? <laughs> oh, who knows, man. Yeah, see, because if you smoke it, then theoretically, do, like... Well, your lungs will probably collapse, and you'll die anyway. Yeah, but, like, do... What, uh, essentially... Uh, I suppose, what... like, if you're burning it, like, the bacteria will technically die. So, like, oh. that part of it would... I guess... Yeah, I oh, no, right, but I guess it depends. Like, back, generally, bacteria... thrives yeah. in warm temperatures. But yeah, I but guess... not when they're on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, maybe. They, so, they, in by uh, warm temperatures, you mean like a bay marie, but you know, in a, <laughs> in a furnace, bacteria doesn't do that. Right. <laughs> well, that's what Hitler said, didn't he? <laughs> oh, that's uh, a bit so much. Have you seen your haircut lately? <laughs> Speaking of Hitler, where did you get your haircut? Yeah, well, actually, it was interesting. Um, so, finally, fuck, probably about three nights ago, mm. got to be drunk, went home. Oh, I don't like my hair. It needs a bit of a trim. Awesome. Do I have actual hair clippers? No. I've got an electronic face razor. All right. So what am I going to do? Okay, if I get the comb and I comb a bit of my hair out and then I just shave what hair is on the outside of the comb, it's going to be fine. Which it was for about, I don't know, fucking 30 seconds before I got arrogant and went, I don't need the comb. So I pretty much just took patches out of my hair. So I, I basically looked like I was a junkie who fell into a bin full of scissors. 
How many how many times do you do this a year? Like seriously. I, I know it's my new thing. <laughs> 2012 is me cutting my own hair. Um yeah, so anyway, I went to um one of those $15 men's haircut places in the city. And I'm like, "Oh, just just fix it. Just fix it, please. Right. Just keep the comb over. Just fix it." And the guy's gone, "No worries." And I've left looking like a fucking Hitler youth activist. Yeah. 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 What did you do when you saw me for the first time yesterday when we were at the pub? Oh, I tried to push you in the oven, but... You didn't try to push me in the oven. Oh, we were in a pizza shop. No, right. yeah. Yeah. No, didn't try anyway, to do that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I said hello. No, yeah, yeah you were waving that, to that's me. That's not interesting. Yeah, you were waving to me in a very, like, a staunch kind of, like... Well, I've been going to the gym, my <laughs> arm's locked up, so I need to be doing that when I wave to you. I had sex with an Ecuadorian hairdresser once. How did that go? Was it, was it unusual? Different? Oh, just, oh no! It was, it was just a good memory. Just stock standard, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> In and out, one and done. But she, prior to that, she was a lesbian. So, prior to that, yeah, yeah, nicely done, yeah. nicely done. Ecuadorian. What do Ecuadorian women look like? They come from Ecuador. Yeah, but what do they look like? South uh, America, isn't it? Dark, dark yeah. skinned. No, she wasn't. She was blonde, hairy. I think uh, her father might have been Irish. I don't know. No. So she was swinging through the trees with a beer can. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Don't know where she was swinging from my nuts. <laughs> so speaking about that, geez, well, his nuts. Right. Yeah, That's, this is actually weird because my fucking girlfriend's in the room right now. All right. So she got back you're, from you're China. Swe- right? You're swearing a lot. Is this a? It's it, okay. It's not a family friendly. It's not a family friendly thing. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah. No, you can say where the fuck you want. Yeah. So my girlfriend's back from China, and can you tone it down a little bit because I, I don't I'm not comfortable with that. You're not really? comfortable with it. I'll do my fucking best. <laughs> um, so she's gone. You need to go to a sexual health clinic and get yourself sorted. Why? What was wrong with your dick? Yeah. Well, nothing. Did you have some problems? But with this is the rule because I haven't done that since seeing her. I now have to do that. So I bit the bullet and I went to this sexual health clinic yesterday um, at about one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm thinking, well, they open at one and they start seeing people at one thirty, and it's free. Everything's free. Checkups right. free. If you need medication, medication's free. I don't give a fuck. All right, cool. So I'll rock up there. Are you circumcised about- or uncircumcised? Uncircumcised. All Just right. uh, I'll upload the photos later for the uh, the podcast. Uh, All right, cool. But anyway, so I get to this fucking place oh, I don't give a shit I'm like I, who cares I go in it's going to be 15 minutes right did you I have ro- to show your cock to a woman or a man no well guess what I rocked up right oh. and there's this, this is like 60 70 year old woman behind this like weird desk counter thing and she's like she goes oh okay is this your first time I'm did like, you rock up fucked no no I didn't <laughs> luckily but I was like yeah this is my first time so what the hell do I do she goes oh I'll log into the computer and you know, and then sit down and I'm like, all right, how long is this going to take? She so goes, oh, about two two hours minimum. What? <laughs> two hours minimum? She goes, yeah. I look in the waiting room. The waiting room is filled with like 20 to 30 of the most depressed people I've ever seen in my life. Like everyone's staring at their shoes. They're what, too any embarrassed. Any of them hot sluts? Because they're mostly, they mostly gay dudes and prostitute looking women. That yeah. was basically it. So they're all just sitting there staring at the shoes. Gay like, people and prostitutes have a lot of sex. They do. So a lot of un- <laughs> unhealthy, unregulated, godly sex. And um, so they're sitting down doing that. And then I didn't mean to offend this woman, but I looked at her and I'm like, two hours? She goes, yeah, there's a lot of people. I looked at her and I go, is this like a common occurrence? Does this happen like day in, day out? She goes, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much like this. It's like... Every hour, there's just like hordes of people coming in. And instead of me being politically correct and sensitive and going, oh, well, you know, at least they're doing the right thing. I look at her and I'm like, are you serious? And I pull this horrible look on my face and then I'm like, oh, that's massively oh, insensitive. You're an insensitive bastard. Massively insensitive. Yeah. Yeah. So I left, but it does remind so me. So have of... you have you got yourself checked out yet? No, Monday morning, 8.45. Right. You, you stay away from him. Okay, good. Yeah. Is it <laughs> is it burning when you pee? <laughs> <laughs> Only when I'm drunk and trying to light a cigarette. <laughs> and I'm, I'm confused about what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> but um, so it reminded me of, oh, God, maybe three years ago, right? So I was seeing this girl. 
very briefly. And um, we didn't really get up to too much, but it was always drunken. So the next morning I'd wake up and go, as what a, did I do? As an uncircumcised guy, have you ever done the zip up on your fly and got your foreskin caught in it? <laughs> Never, because luckily I don't suffer from Down syndrome. Right. Yeah, not, I've, I've never done that. Really, not I've even when you're a kid. I've never done that. Really, I've never done that. But what I have done, I tried to impress a chick when I was about thirteen years old. By you know the old um, metal gates where they swing open uh-huh. and they, then they swing closed. The gate was closed, and I, I, we were walking home from school from the bus stop, and I said, I didn't tell her that was my house. I went, look at that house. Look how scary that dog is. Because we owned a fucking a massive greyhound dark like guard dog kind of thing. It was huge. And she's this little girl, she's like, Don't don't try and jump over, the dog will eat you and I was trying to be all manly. I didn't want to tell her it was my own house, my own fucking dog. I was like I was like, Oh no, I'll 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 fucking I'll jump the fence. I jumped over the gate, but I was right in the middle. The gate was closed. As I jumped over, the gate decided to open. I swing with the gate, it swings close. My nuts get caught between the lock and the two gates together. Really? Um, and a bit of my foreskin. And so I'm on the gate going, ah! And she's like, oh, the dog is just like sitting down wagging its tail. Meanwhile, I'm screaming. She has no concept of why I would be screaming. But that's the closest I've got to... Uh, yeah. A circumcision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All that and trying to like going over jumps on my BMX and turning the, the fucking... The, the front wheel the wrong way, and when you land, you you don't land on your seat. You land on the bar, and you yeah, split your balls in half. Yeah, basically, I did, that. I did do a jump once and land on the handlebars sideways. Yeah, so I got the handlebar straight <laughs> right in my, in there. Right ah, into my, yeah, into I've my done stum- that. Into my stomach. <laughs> Worst winding I've ever had. I, I couldn't breathe for a minute. I remember going over a jump with my fucking mountain bike, right? And you know, when you go over a jump, you lift the front tire up. I didn't do that shit. I don't know why we were kids, so we, we built this massive fucking jump and we made a ditch underneath it. So it's like when you go over the jump, you look down and go, oh, I'm so far up in the sky. So much air. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't lift it up. I just basically went, like, rode up and then the front wheel just, like, tipped down. I went flying at a million miles an hour. Is this the one where you went home with? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I landed on the ground. The helmet flew off. And I remember, I remember going over the jump blinking and then lying on the ground with blood pouring out of my face and seeing my helmet tumble down the road. Now, my brain, it's like when a computer fucks up and you have to reboot it and it like glitches. My brain glitched and everyone's going, are you all right? Like mothers are running down the street. Are you all right? Instead of saying, I'm okay, my brain did this weird rewiring. The only thing I could think of was a yoga ad. Remember the old yoga ads where it was like stop start animation with a gorilla yeah. and stuff. And the the yeah. snake and that sort of. And the yeah. snake, yeah. Did the speed thing. And yeah. The, yeah. All I could remember. Not was the drugs, a, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> all I could remember was it. My ears pricked up. <laughs> all, I could, all I could remember was a key phrase in one of the ads. Key a tone phrase. Oh no. Nah, yeah, <laughs> I um, it was this key phrase where one of them, one of the characters goes, "Ah, my lunch." Right. Something. Oh. Something must have happened. Maybe the. Like his lunch got smacked off or something. Uh, like he, yeah, he lost his lunch. Anyway, so I yeah. smashed the bike up, smashed my teeth up, there's blood pouring everywhere. Women are running down, like mothers, are you okay, are you okay? I stand up, put my hands in the air to do like a, like, yes, high five. They look at me, I look at them, and all I can say is, ah, my lunch. <laughs> yep. That's a story. That's, that's <laughs> Didn't really go anywhere. Um, well, that's a good story. Yeah. So oh, go. Great story. All right, well, we've been talking about childhood. Um, we've got you in, Kirk. We might as well talk to you. Instead yeah. Instead of having him just talking shit. Oh, go fuck yourself. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Don't get defensive. Why are you getting defensive? I'm, 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 defensive. I'm enjoying just listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on with these yoga stories. <laughs> oh, I got more. I got Tarzo stories as well. <laughs> What's Tarzo? Tarzo? They're like... Uh... No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, no, what about pogs? Do you know what pogs are? Like they're like little, they're milk caps. No. You know, you know when you used to get your in no way or your orange juice, and like you, you'd pull out a little cardboard thing that would do the seal on top of milk or orange juice. No, no, no. This is something from. No. That's why I said no. All right, fine. And okay, I'm, reverse. I'm a little bit older than you guys, so yeah, no. yeah. My well, you're ch- about ten years older than us. Hey? Yeah, my childhood memories are a little bit different to yours. Yeah, yeah no, that's no. cool. Yeah, it's like we had uh, um, Sega Mega Drive. You had. Uh, 
uh, a box. With <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cardboard Fact. box with a <laughs> transmogrifier written on the side of it. Huh? We had Game Watch. Game Watch? Yeah. Little uh, LED. Oh, what are they? I don't know. Game Watch was little, a big thing when no I was a kid. Idea. Yeah. Um, was that like before Archari? The, like, you know, yeah. the... I remember yeah. when Laser Tag first came out. They were like and you the could Game buy Boys it. of my generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they just like sort of like had little like yeah, singles. Was, sort um, of Donkey Kong things. and Donkey yeah, Kong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Greenhouse, Mickey Mouse, Octopus. Uh, but like but it was rap. never one thing you could plug different games in. It was always one thing yeah, and that's your fucking game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Donkey Kong Jr. I had Donkey Kong Jr., Mickey Mouse... My sister bought me Mickey Mouse for my birthday, and uh, and then we had Greenhouse and Donkey Kong Two. What was the difference between Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Two? Was it just a different color? Uh, what one was the sequel? Uh, was Donkey <laughs> Kong Two. You had to at the top. You had to go up different chains and get a key from each one. So yeah, and then you'd go back to the bottom again, and you had to get the key from the top of each of the four chains. Yeah, it was. Pretty basic stuff. <laughs> Pretty basic stuff. Yeah. I mean, what, Donkey Kong won. Wasn't Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong the bad? He Donkey was the bad Kong, guy. Donkey he was the bad guy two. throwing the barrels. And you were someone else yeah, trying you're, to get you're to the Mario. top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, Donkey Kong 2 was, Donkey a Kong double, was a double screened one. And so was Greenhouse oh, and right, yeah, Donkey yeah. Kong. Yeah, yeah. But Donkey Kong Jr. was actually the best of the Game Watch games. Mm. And it was a single, a single one. Like Mickey Mouse or Octopus. Mm. I can't remember the names of all of them, but yeah. All right. Um, what I was going to ask you, though. So, basically, Kirk, what you do, uh, the way we know you, anyway, is uh, we saw you on I stage. I drugs, too. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 well, we found that out later on. But, um, yeah, like you do your stand-up comedy stuff. You, have we seen yeah, you around? actually, I'm curious, man. When was the first time, like, you decided, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get on stage and do comedy. Like, how old do you reckon you were? I listen to a lot of... Uh, Bill Cosby and uh, the Naked the in the door. and the Naked Vicar show when I was yeah. a kid, yeah. And I always thought that that's something I'd that was something that I'd really like to do, yeah. Um, and in my teens, I I sort of knew that that was something that I definitely had plans to do. I didn't get into it until my sort of mid late twenties, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm sort of glad I didn't because I wouldn't I wouldn't want to have. Uh, grown up on stage like some of the younger oh, yeah, I'm have. with you man I, I, my personal opinion yeah. is no one wants to see a young cunt on stage talking about oh the, the math teacher said this this week or, I'm like, not and yeah. I'm not being diplomatic but like there are actually there are a lot of young there are there are young comedians yeah. that you know do alright but, but it's few and far but there, yeah but there's a lot of guys out yeah. there that you're just like come on yeah. just yeah. grow some hair I'm glad and I did then tell me growing story. up first yeah yeah, yeah, yeah some hair on my ass before and some good stories life stories yeah yeah definitely so, do you remember your first gig? What that was yeah. like? My first gig was actually on the Early Bird Show with Daryl Cotton, uh, who passed away just recently. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, maybe. rest in peace. Uh, oh, Daryl Cotton was in a band called oh, Zoot, and his lead guitarist was Rick Springfield. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, I wish that I had Jesse's girl. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, Daryl Cotton was like a big pop star in the 60s, 70s. And, uh, but then he hosted uh, the TV show with Marty Monster, uh, which was called The Early Bird Show. Oh, yeah, yeah. But when I went on, uh, The Early Bird Show had gone national and they couldn't call So it... this is a TV show? Yeah, yeah. So your first time was on a fucking TV show? <laughs> yeah, yeah, It wasn't yeah. some dingy pub in the middle <laughs> You're no. like, I'll give this a crack, I'm on TV. Yeah, well, I was Holy, like... that's a baptism of fire. Yeah, Jesus. yeah. I was, I was like... 16, man. Fuck. Shit, man. <laughs> um, and I know I was just talking about, uh, but it took me a long time to uh, find find out about the comedy scene in Melbourne and yep, get into yep. that. So it was 10 years after this first gig that I uh, did my first gig at the ESPY. Yeah. yeah. So you would have been about, what, like 25, 26, something like yeah, that? Yeah, I would have been 24, 25. Okay, yeah. My first gig at the ESPY. Yeah. yeah. And they're still I, doing comedy at the ESPY? I don't think they are. Really. They're, not, no, they're, they're not trying anymore. to bring it back. Oh, really? Back. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think Fleety is trying to get that happening. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely killed my first gig at the ESPY. And then I went back a few weeks later and did another one and uh, took it in the arse. <laughs> <laughs> but how did the gig go? Um, 
I got blown off stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they hated the gig, though. <laughs> um, yeah, the gig wasn't too good. Um, so that so was the second gig, yeah. yeah, the second gig, I, I died. Yeah. It took me another year before I went back and did gigs again. Yeah. And I think after that, I did raw comedy at upstairs at uh, Le Joke at the Last Laugh on the corner of... Gertrude and Smith Street, Collingwood. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a YouTube clip floating around, which is um, a raw comedy thing from 99 or something yeah. that you're on. That's so. a bit that, later. Was it around that time? Oh, a bit later. No, that's a fair bit later, yeah. Okay, yeah. By then, I had a few years of, uh, a few years up my sleeve. Yeah. yeah. I got banned from everywhere when I, when I started out, and I basically just did uh, the Dan O'Connell Hotel in Carlton. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got really good and no one sort of knew who I was because I wasn't doing any of the main rooms because I was banned from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you banned because you were like a young loose cunt? Just fucking... Uh, yeah, I was a loose cannon and I, I wasn't shy about using the C word. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, when I got banned... And it was back in the day when that was really... Like, yeah. now... now well, look at Doug Anthony All-Stars. They were using the C word every fucking left, right and centre when they yeah. first started. Yeah, but that was like... Yeah. I don't know that one. I, yeah, I wouldn't know. Like, but they had a guitar, awesome. and if you if you've got a guitar, they'll let you do. Oh, so do prop. You didn't, yeah. you didn't have a prop. Elect- I, I didn't have an electrified applause machine. I was- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, it was just you and you, you and the microphone. It was just me and the c word. You know, yeah. we, we were out there. Yeah. Uh, we were battling. Uh, we were battling this idea out there that the c word was the most offensive thing in the whole world. Yeah, and I was trying to. I was trying to reclaim the C word. Yeah. Uh, Take it away from all the cunts that were using it as yeah. a derogatory offensive sort yeah. of like... Yeah, you know. and I was just trying to say, hey, it can just be a friendly word. Yeah. You can say, hey, you're a grouse cunt. Yeah. And people I tried that on my mum. Did not. <laughs> people, people weren't ready for it. Yeah. Definitely not Christians, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was avant-garde. You know, I yeah. Was, and that, that's what comedy is all about, pushing envelopes. Yeah. Now everyone's doing rape jokes. A lot of postal jobs are about that as well. <laughs> I'll just get back in my seat, back in the box, back in the cupboard. <laughs> well, no, I, yeah, and I totally agree with you, man. It's like the people that, like, if you talk to people who really love stand up, the names that pop up are people like Bill Hicks, Doug Stanhope. And, and if you look at these people, they're fucking, yeah, they're pushing envelopes. They're, they're, they're using words like nigger and cunts and, and all this sort of shit. Mm. And it's not that Jerry Sun. What's the deal with airplane food? <laughs> now, back to what you were saying about the word, uh, the N-word. Mm. Chris Rock reckons that if you're white, you're not allowed to use that word. Yeah. Unless you go to do your Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve, five minutes before 11, and an uh, African-American robs you and just as, uh, just as you're entering or leaving the store. But that's pretty that's, much... I don't know about that, because that's pretty much saying you're not allowed to use the N-word unless you celebrate Christmas. And I don't celebrate... I don't celebrate... <laughs> was Chris Rock on acid when he came up with this weird logic? That's it's, fucking it's weird, It's in man. one of his routines. And I'm like, well... Because he reckons his white friends won't use the word, the N-word, when singing along to Dr. Dre. And I'm like, you get fucked. Yeah. That's a lyric. That's when I. That's when I use the N word the most. Well, well, yeah. Well, that's the only context you've really got for it. <laughs> as long as you're using the N word if you're singing Dr. Dre lyrics and not referring to Dr. Dre, that, that's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking nigger, Dr. Dre, unacceptable. No. But if you're singing the lyrics, different. see, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the N word unless I was uh, unless I was rapping. Yeah. In fact, there was one. No, I, I find the N word more was... offensive than nigger. Just say nigger. Don't say the N-word. I, I mm, look, it's, it's one of those things. No, like, you, you're, not, you're not from that background, so like, it doesn't you can't really make have that, that call. Much, I don't have a cultural... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thing. Unless I'm uh, rapping or singing Elvis Costello, I won't use the N-word. Yeah. Um, Does Elvis Costello ever use the word cunt? No, but he definitely uses or the nigger? N-word. Yeah, he does. He goes, and I will sing it. He goes... Uh, one less white nigger, Oliver's army is here today. Yeah, and so I'll that I'll use I'll use the N word then. Yeah, uh, and I'll also use it when I'm uh, singing along to the Ghetto Boys or uh, NWA or Doctor yeah. Trey or. It's it's, um, it's a word that hasn't found its way into my vocabulary at all. I just don't. It just hasn't. There hasn't been a moment where it's. Sometimes when I'm kicking it with my homies, I'll use the N word as well. Yeah. But 
you know they love me and respect me for who I am and they're not they're not trying to be vocabulary Nazis and tell me what words I can and can't use yeah because you know I back them up it's funny though there's a, a dude I work with and he, he's he's um um, he's African. He's African oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I was thinking about oh. that. And, and he always, he's like, hey, what's up, my nigga? And then I always want to respond with, not much, fucking nigga. But I, I, I don't feel I'm allowed to. So I do this bullshit thing in my head where I go, like, the first stage goes, not much, my black friend. And then my brain goes, don't call him black. So I end up going, <laughs> he walks up and he's like, hey, what's up, my nigga? And I respond with, not much, my human companion <laughs> who is of equal importance and um, uh, valid like uh, you have valid rights as me oh not much it's fucking stupid mm. it's See, weird in Australia I'm Aboriginal so I'm a boom or an abo and I only just recently found out that it's How a fa- what you're white though yeah, I know. Are you half, quarter? No, one sixteenth. There you go. But you can't dilute who I am. I'm Aboriginal, one hundred percent. Um, I'm you can a, dilute at one sixteenth. I no. guess. <laughs> well, no, uh, you can't. You can't rape, rape it out of me. Who I am? I'm Aboriginal, and uh, I've always been Aboriginal. But I don't like people calling me a bong. And well, bong is pretty offensive because that that stems from. Really? Was it the the noise or something? It's, it's like a joke. Why do they why are they called bongs? That that's the noise they make when you hit them or Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I when, think it was boom. around before people were driving cars though. Boom. Oh, yeah. when you hit them in your car, yeah. right? Well, I, that's what I that's that's why I think it would be offensive cuz yeah. boom like boom. Yeah, boom. I I think that like I but think what the term other, What other I way think could bong's boom? cool. I think bong's cooler than nigger to be honest. I'm a boom. Really? Yeah. I don't I, I, I hit by a car though, eh? Boom. Um, <laughs> but I don't, have, I don't have a problem with Abo either. I didn't know Abo was offensive. I was yeah, referring yeah, yeah. myself as an Abo for a long time. Yeah. And then I found out, no, that's offensive. And I've just got to go around and find everyone that's called me an Abo and go, hang on, were you fucking... Were you, <laughs> were you, been, were you, being, disres- were you being disrespectful? <laughs> I didn't know. You know what's funny? I grew up in a country town in New South Wales and I always would hear little that's things like... Funny. Well, I'd hear little things like, oh, Abos, the fucking Abos. I grew up with Abos. I played cricket with them, like, in the street. They were fine. I never really understood why there'd be Aussie dudes going, fucking Abos. I'm like, oh, I go to school with Abos. We're yeah. cool. We play games together. You know, we stole I moved their, to Melbourne. We stole their land off them. and they seem- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and they, they seem to be complying. It's fine. <laughs> as soon as I moved to Melbourne and I go to Smith Street, I'm like, oh, my God. It's a stereotype. Like, the people who were going... These fucking abos. They don't. They only. They're only seeing like the abos small in Smith Street are cool. Kind of I fucking often. Really? I often kick it with them. Yeah. I've only. I, I just go over and bloody scab a cigarette off one of them and share my bloody know. bottle of port. It's just a bunch of guys hanging out because, like, you know, home is shit. See, the Aboriginal yeah. people I've met on Smith Street, or they don't have one. No, have always right. been like a, a loud, aggressive, kicking things over and trying to like rob. Yeah, that's because they're pissed. And I'm like that when I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, they abos on Smith Street are good blokes. I've yeah, and uh, Archie, the beggar who always puts his elbow up. In I the know air. the man. Yeah, yeah I've yeah, seen yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, Ab- yeah, he's a good bloke. Yeah. No, I like I like them all. They're good blokes. The thing is, that pisses me off. There's shit people in every cult. There's shit Caucasian yeah. people. There's shit. There's, there's shit, shit. You know, people in Aboriginal culture. We've got uh, Michael O'Loughlin, the Sydney footballer. Is he a cunt? I haven't met him. I don't know. Uh, allegedly, he took part in a pack rape in Adelaide. Oh, sorry, right. Yeah. With Adam Huskus, but you know, I'm I, I don't know. I yeah, have, but they're footballers. Like, we, do we don't yeah. apply that logic to like if you look at the animal kingdom, it's rape. It's any time. Oh, it's the mating season. You can mm. see the female is sitting under the tree, enjoying the shade, and then oh look, the and they're male... clawing for dear life at the yeah. nearest tree, trying to get away yeah. from it. And then the male comes along, and look, now they're they're reproducing. He's, it's rape. It's, I don't know about in the that. animal kingdom, it's always fucking rape. The guy comes up, jumps on the top and just starts pounding that animal That's, pussy's nah, house it's again. It's rough always sex. rape. She's into it. <laughs> <laughs> She's into it because she can't fucking escape. He's got his claws Seriously, that if, far if into you're his a, shoulders. If you're a lioness, you can tell anyone to fuck off, can't you? I tell you being raped. No, no, she could just turn around and fucking rip him apart. Yeah, she could just claw him in the face. Yeah, she's got. Seriously, there's no rape in Raising. the animal kingdom. Oh, I don't know about <laughs> that. I honestly believe that. So, so you did that gig. What? That, what's that? Maybe 15 years ago, 10 years ago. What's that was it? the 
state final of Royal Comedy. Yeah. Oh, no, that was the national final of Royal Comedy. Oh, right, yeah. okay, cool. I'd won the state final. I drew with a, a gay comedy musical duo called Teacup. <laughs> All right. were, were, they, were they were um like were they on for that particular like yeah yeah yeah, yeah i saw them okay because i i sort of fast forwarded everybody else but i, I checked out your thing yeah. um like and I, I went for about you know two i was on with some great acts so did you did you want to like chase the big stage or did you get to a point in your life you're like you know what fuck it i'm just gonna do my own thing or was it like from that point onwards, because like I got to be honest, man, if no. I was on that stage, what the fuck did you mix out with? That's great. Uh blue shit. Um, <laughs> white, blue V. Yeah, blue V. Uh, so mix it with blue. Yeah, but no, dude. If I was on stage I doing Red that Bull. in front of all I those people, <laughs> and I did that gig, my brain would have gone, "Fucking, I need to do this shit all the time in front of this many people." Like my personally, yeah. my brain would. Have done I must admit, I prefer. Um, Doing a room with you like the small, more nah, intimate. Nah, nah, oh, you like I'm the big bigger. One. I like the big crowds. Yeah, yeah. But there's a certain freedom in doing a small crowd as well. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing a small crowd, I drop all my material and just shoot, from, shoot Do- from the hip. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like what I'm doing here today. I'm not doing my material. I'm just yeah. we're just we're just uh, talking the shit. I'm just talking, talking um, shit. Uh, talking about well, what do we eat? What do you eat? What do you eat? Apparently, you're a vegetarian. Yeah. You're all over that. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh! We're talking a little bit. Shut about, up! We're Shut up for a second, Andy. This before. We're... When I was seven, yep. I was watching telly, and they uh, had some footage of a baby seal being clubbed to death in Canada. Yeah, oh, fucking those clubs, and yeah. I was so traumatized by this, I was in tears, and yeah. I told my parents I wanted to be a vegetarian, which is a Bit of a weird thing for a seven. Especially back in those days. Yeah, like, this um, is like uh, 1978. Yeah. yeah. No, no one's doing that shit. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. I, uh, I've i never eaten... I've never intentionally eaten red meat since 1978. Right. But um, how many times have you accidentally eaten meat? He wouldn't know. It's just like, it's one of those things. Uh, like, has someone ever gone to you, like, done a joke? They've gone, I have the sandwich. It's It's got... No. Something in well, the fuck. I, I was on a school camp in grade three. Because I kind of want to do that to people. I was, I yeah, it's I a in, bad thing. I was on a school camp in grade three, yeah. and uh, we got given sandwiches for lunch, and I had a ham sandwich, and I went to the teacher and said, hey, I'm vegetarian, and he told me to swap my ham sandwich with someone else, and no one else would We'd swap, swap it. my ham sandwich yeah. for a tomato and cheese sandwich. Yeah. And, uh, you had to eat it because you were fucking starving. Is that what happened? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess so. And I felt really sick afterwards. Yeah. I hear that from, like, I've got a, a few vegetarian and vegan mates who are like, they talk about when they're eating things and they they taste the meat. And I'm like, is it the texture? And they're like, fucking, if you go vego for a bit, the moment meat hits your mouth, it immediately, your brain goes, totally aware of it. fuck yeah. is this? Like, it's not yeah. even like, Oh my god! Did that have food on it? It's not even that. It's bacteria like... in meat that your stomach's not used to dealing with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that makes um, sense. Yeah. I had a a weird packet of two minute noodles when I was um, living in Sydney. Yeah, working as a storeman at a pet shop, and um, I read the ingredients and I didn't know what a bonito was. Bonito or bonito? Well, I have it's no bonito, idea what that it's is. Bonito, yeah. It's bonito, a yeah. it's a type of fish. Yeah. yeah. And I'm talking to my I'm talking to my mate Bruno, who's uh, sitting on the forklift, and I went to do a fart, and I just shat my pants. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. So, uh... and I had a pair of scissors on my keyring, and I've gone into the bathroom, and uh, I cut each side of my fucking undies, yeah, just ripped them off, and just fucking no, yeah, <laughs> dump that shit. <laughs> And there was this one time I was out on this date with this girl who looked like the lead singer of the cause. She was so drop dead gorgeous, and uh, she took me to Revolver. Yeah. Oh yeah, Chapel uh, Street. Yeah, that she, stinky place. I had no idea that Revolver was open for lunch during the day. Yeah, it's, it's just dude, it's twenty four seven, twenty four hour yeah. fucking venue. Yeah. You go there at eleven o'clock at night. You you walk out at nine o'clock in the morning, and they're still serving beers. It's fucking horrible. I've got a really good revolver story that I'll yeah. tell you after this one. Right. But um, I'm meeting uh, I'm meeting this 
vegetarian dish and I'm looking at this thing just going, that's a piece of chicken, right? Yeah. And I walk up to the kitchen and go, hey, isn't this chicken? And I walked away and then I came back and he's handed, and he's shown me that it was actually a piece of mushroom. Right. And I, th- I don't know, I was pretty sure he'd done the switcheroo. Yeah. But I'm out on a date. I don't want to kick up a fuss. Yeah. I really like this girl. And uh, we go to a comedy venue later on and I end up shitting my pants. So it was chicken? Yeah, I was eating yeah, chicken. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't a mushroom. Yeah, he did the yeah. switcheroo. I got fucking... So if you're a vegetarian, never go to a revolver. <laughs> I'm really worried that the really good shit I did, we didn't record. No, man, don't worry about it. It's all there. It's all there. It's all there. Yeah. The only thing we missed out on was probably when you guys started doing some Public Enemy. That's where it sort of... Right. Yeah, well, well, let's relive that. She what? A, that, that. We, we could um, recreate the Public Enemy thing and fade it out yeah. when we get to the all bits right. where we don't know the words. All right. Let, let, okay. okay. All right. I'll we, start okay. and one line each. Yeah. Okay. Right, you guys rock it. Oh, we'll, we'll be there. We'll, we'll both Hey, good night. Good night, right. Melbourne. Good night, the all. world. Uh, we love you all, and we've had a lot of fun doing this podcast. Yo, Chuck, these motherfuckers are still fronting on us. Show them that we can do this, because we always knew this. Ha ha. Yeah, boy. Beast. How low can you go? Death, Death row. row. What, what about the nose? Once again, I bring the incredible, the incredible, animal, the incredible, deep. Public enemy number one. Five all said freeze. But I had none. Can I tell that everyone had a gun? <laughs> well, I had a gun. Then I had none. Uh, <laughs> so they got me in my cell because of my records they sell because a brother like me said, well, <laughs> here comes the record and you think you ought to listen to what you're going to do. Well, the animal. What they say to you, follow for now. What would the people say? It, I don't know. It's a miracle. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a miracle. Black <laughs> is back all in. We're going to win. Check it out. Yeah, yo, come on. Here we go again. Turn it up. Bring the noise.